Good, mo- <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Good morning, friends. I'm Tina Gadini. And I'm Justin Johnson. <laughs> See, I apparently didn't start quick enough, this, so Justin's like, this is, the, me. this is the problem. We all we do the same thing over and over again, so I can't start until you start. All right, all right. It's, it's, let's, let's try this again. Okay. Welcome to Fellowship of Faith. I'm Tina Gadini. And I'm Justin Johnson. Hey! Good morning, everybody. Hey, we're good. Good morning, it. We did, guys. We did it. <laughs> How about this crazy weather? We have snow in yeah. April. Yeah, which my birthday's in April, and I always like say next Sunday. No, two Sundays. Two Sundays from now, two the Sunday. day after Easter. So if it snows on my birthday, there's snow on the ground. It's too late. I think it needs just to stop. Stay in bed. April there should be a wall. No more snow. Yeah. And I love snow. I just don't love April snow. Our ducks apparently like the snow. Really? Yeah. I'm the, not home because I'm at work all the time now, but Dave is texting me pictures of, like, the ducks are in the snow. They're, and they're playing the snow? Yeah. The geese outside of our house hate the snow, and they're probably wondering why they're back so early. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. It yeah. is not nearly warm enough for you guys to be back yet, but what do I know? Guys, thank you for joining us this morning. Like we, and subscribe yep. and share. And share. Oh, share. Share's share a good share, one. Share. That's a good one. Yeah. That is, and share is and a good let one. us know that you're here because we kind of see who's watching, but not unless you're like our personal friends. Yeah. So, so comment below that you're with us. And we always like to see where you guys are worshiping from. It's really yeah. cool to see the dots around the map of where everyone's tuning in from. Yeah. Speaking of map, Palm Sunday next Sunday. I, yes. Favorite I'm Sunday so of excited. the year. So I've, I'm an interesting predicament here because I'm planning on walking from my house in Round Lake. Okay. That's 12 and a half miles. But I'm going to be at a going away party for a friend of mine who's getting deployed in McHenry. The night before? The night before. So hmm. do I just stay at my friend's house who's having the party and then to walk from his house? He's in McHenry? He's in McHenry. Yeah, I do that. He's right behind East Campus. 12 miles is a lot. That's a lot. And especially because I won't be getting a lot of sleep. You know, and you're not like training for it. No. Yes. No, Walk not from at McHenry. All. Walk from McHenry. I think we're gonna do that. So yeah. I will be walking from East Campus. If anyone else is gonna be in that area, okay. we'll link up. All right. And I'm gonna be walking from Ringwood. Okay. Is that is that where Rusty Nail yeah, is? That's yeah. In just Ringwood. The parking lot just north of Rusty Nail, and we take the, the bike trail down and how far cut is across. that? Just 10? over 10. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. And Boulder students, they're meeting somewhere, and Rock students are meeting somewhere. I believe they're meeting at the Framez's house, the okay. Boulder students, but if I could be wrong. If you guys go online to FOF, Fellowship of Faith.org, whatever our website is, if you scroll down, there's links. Oh. Or ad- the addresses is there. I did not know that, so that's cool. Yeah. Check that out. And if you guys cannot walk to us physically because you're in a different state and you haven't started already, uh, just walk around the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Declare or pro- proclaim his the happiness of Palm Sunday. That's yeah. what I'll be doing. And so. then every every year, Dave posts something um, like a, a pilgrim guide. Oh, yeah. And and like as you're going along, like you stop at certain points and be like, all right, this is like a, a one of the psalms that we're going to read. And I love uh, just playing worship music really loud to really yeah. Yeah. Know, let my neighbors know that it's five in the morning. You should be up praising God. That's what I like to do. So yeah. I'll be doing the that. Fir- the first year we walked. So this is like what ten years ago. Yeah. 20 yeah, years long long ago. Ago. So we were walking and there's just a group of us walking from Hebron because we were young and naive and, <laughs> and and we left at like 11 p.m. walked through the night. I think we all had like black jackets on because yeah, it's, yeah. that's what we wore. And it was cold. And nobody could see us because we're all wearing black. And we actually got s- stopped by the police because they're like, hey, we can't see you guys and you that's need problem, to. That's a problem, And so we had a, like a couple of people had flashlights that they would turn on intermittently. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, you need to keep those on the whole time. And we're yeah. like, okay. So people can see you. Thank or you for letting us continue because that yeah. would have been disappointing. Yeah, that would have been very disappointing. Yeah. Now you got to turn back and go, what, what do you do? You have to go back home then? And I mean, I guess we would have shoved like 12 of us in his squad car and he would have <laughs> driven us home. <laughs> I don't know. So next Saturday, we're going to be broadcasting in the coffee house. Did Andrew tell you this? Yes, he just told me this up in the booth just and, before we and started. We might have like a walking camera. Yeah, so Reagan's going to be home and she's going to be She'll be running it. the camera and we can do I like you guys, interviews with you guys. We're just going to wing it. and it'll be, oh, Like we always, always do. <laughs> it'll be so fun to get uh, one-on-one accounts yeah. of how people who walked, people who didn't walk, what the experience was watching those yeah. come in. Yeah. It'll be very fun. So we do have communion today. If you guys want to commune with us, grab some bread and wine. Yeah, bread and wine. It, yeah. Uh, today is also the last day for Galatians. Oh, last day for Galatians. I don't know what the next series is. Me neither, but I can't believe it's already over. I yeah. mean, I feel like we just started, but yeah. now here we are at the end. So yeah, it looks like they're getting ready for us behind All right. us. You guys enjoy worship and we'll see you at the end. Yeah. Enjoy the service.
morning, Fellowship Faith. Good morning. Guys, good to see you today. Welcome to April, huh? Though it feels like two weeks off Christmas, but hey, we'll roll. Those of you who don't know me, my name is David Gadini. I'm the pastor here on staff. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We are T minus one week out of Palm Sunday. Next week begins a huge week here, not only at Fellowship of Faith, but for Christians all over the place. And I want to tell you a little bit about what to expect coming into the house next Sunday. We have our worship service at 10 o'clock, but there won't be 9 o'clock discipleship hour going on. The reason there won't be 9 o'clock discipleship hour going on is because we encourage you to take part in the pilgrimage, which means walk to Fellowship of Faith next Sunday from your homes. There might be snow on the ground. That's okay. God invented coats. It might be raining. That's okay. God invented umbrellas. It might be sunny. That's okay. God invented sun screen. Wherever you might live, wherever your starting destination might be, we encourage you either from your home or to gather with other people here at this church and experience just a little bit. Taste it. Taste what it was like for Jesus coming into that city of Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. Taking part in this experience is not only a religious practice that goes back for hundreds of years. It'll help you frame what you're about to experience when you come in these doors. If you'd like to see where other people are walking from, there is a map that you can find right up at the Welcome Center that will post where some people are starting from. Maybe shoot them a text and, uh, and see if you want to meet up along the way or, or, or find a common destination. Or maybe it's just a very personal journey for you in headspace with God, just walking in the early morning, praying, communing, and connecting in that journey with him. But next Sunday, it all begins, and you can find our pilgrim guide, which we encourage you to use on our website at fellowshipoffaith.org. Right there on the homepage, you'll see all the Holy Week times and services, not only for Palm Sunday with the pilgrim guide, but also Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, which is coming the week after that as well. So I encourage you, check it out. Likewise, if you ordered merch for the Palm Sunday Walk, um, it's in. You probably saw it at the tables if you're here in person. If you're listening online, make sure to come in this week and pick it up. And uh, if you have FOF merch, I, I'd encourage you, wear it next Sunday when you come in and let's, uh, let's kind of put the colors on and, uh, and do our thing. Finally, it is April. Softball season's coming, and FOF has a softball team. And so we're, we don't clap for Palm Sunday, but <laughs> softball, all right, all right. So if you like softball or you, you believe in it with all your soul, <laughs> sign up table that you'll find over here on your way out. It's co-ed league. You gotta be 17 and older to play, but beyond that, there's like no restrictions. I mean, if, if you can pronounce the word bat, you can play. And even if you can't pronounce the word bat, it's still okay. So um, it, it's just, a, it's, it's inner church league, but it's a lot of fun. Games are on Monday nights here in McHenry against other area churches. You can find Todd Wheelgoss if you have any questions or, or check out online to get information to get a hold of him. Um, Stuff is in e-news as well. Make sure to sign up for that. So that's the spread, and uh, those games kick off the end of April, so don't delay on getting your name signed up if you're interested in uh, even just getting more information on what it entails. So with all that said, it struck me as we were preparing for today that this is the last week of Galatians. We have been on this journey with Galatians since New Year's, looking at this little book that is so easily overlooked and forgotten in the daily life of the everyday believer, but man, it is just chock full of what the way of God and the call of God is all about in this world. We've covered a lot of ground since January, haven't we? You, you think about what we've highlighted and what we've learned, that Galatians is about the gospel. And the gospel, most broadly put, is about what God does, not about what you do. That the way you get right with God is because of what God does, not because of what you do. That the way you become a part of God's covenant people, his covenant family, is all about what God has done for you in Christ, not about what 
you do. That if anyone, no matter how important they should be, who they claim to be, what their pedigree or their, the, the degrees they have to, after their name, whether it's an angel from heaven themselves, preaches a different kind of gospel, a different kind of message about how to get right with God, about how to be a part of his covenant people. Doesn't matter, reject it. Follow the truth of what God says no matter what other people might be telling you. That all of us nonetheless have a propensity, don't we? To want to add on to the gospel to make a plus one, so to speak. That what Jesus has done for me gets me started, but then I need to add to that, whether it's following the Mosaic Law, being a good person, or any other number of plus ones that we can add on to that. But what we've learned from this book is any plus one is nothing short of perverting the gospel and therefore perverting God himself. So don't be a plus one pervert, right? Just don't do it. We've learned that through the law, I've died to the law, that I might live for God, that I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself up for me. And if a righteousness from God could be attained by the law, then Christ died for nothing. We've learned that we receive God's Spirit by believing what we heard, not by some program of bettering our life or living in obedience to some kind of code. We've learned that the law is good, but nothing more than a babysitter. And we've grown beyond the need for something like that. We've learned that the Spirit of God has made us children of Abraham. Genuine, bona fide children of Abraham, even if we're actually not. But makes us inheritors of the blessing that God made to Abraham, part of his people, his lineage, what God was doing among them. We've learned that no matter what our gender, we are all sons of God because of that through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of us who have baptized into Christ, that is, immersed ourselves in his gospel, we've clothed ourselves with Christ. And that in his community, there is now no difference along any lines, as Paul will put it, between Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, that we're all one in Christ. We've learned that it's so easy to turn back to the weak and miserable principles of trying to get right with God by what we do, by what we expect and experience in this world that you get what's coming to you and you only receive what you earn. We've learned that each of us are in a conflict and nature inherent to us that is drawn to a relationship with God based on performance, and that never does it well. But also another side, by God's Spirit, and that the two are in conflict with each other, leaving us in a place that we often don't do what we want, let alone knowing what we want. We've heard the words of Paul. To choose the way of the Spirit. A new way of living and thinking and being. Not by living by getting good enough before God to somehow earn his favor, but rather to walk with him, to dance. To enjoy his company and presence and invite his way to lead in the dance of our life. We've covered so much in this little book called Galatians. Obvious examples of what sin is in the way of the flesh or the sinful nature might be. Obvious examples of what God is doing in you, what he's producing. And today we come to the end of that journey. 
a mere 2,300 words, give or take, depending on the translation that you're using. But in that, so much insight, so much, so much God wants to tell you and me. And we come to the end where Paul leaves us with both a final warning and invitation which we're gonna find out actually are the exact same message and the exact same thing. Let me share his final words with you out of this letter here today. I'll give it to you first in the NIV. Here's what he says. Do not be, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And he says, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Because at the end of the day, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision mean anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. So from now on, let no one cause me trouble, he says, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. One thing I've liked to do through this series. And one thing I actually like to do personally in my own devotional practice is to read the words of the Bible in varying translations. I find that when I do, it helps me get out of my own expectations, my own head space. It, it clarifies things at times. It, it engages me in different ways. I want to read these same words to you again from a translation called The Message with slight modification by me along the way. See how it might bring these final words, these final words of Paul to life, maybe in a different way. He says this, don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, he harvests a crop of weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life, eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community or fellowship of faith. Now, in these last sentences, I want to emphasize in the bold scrawls of my personal handwriting the immense importance of what I have written to you. These people who are attempting to force the ways of circumcision on you have only one motive. They want an easy way to look good before others, lacking the courage to live by a faith that shares Christ's suffering and death. All their talk about the law is gas. They themselves don't keep the law, and they are highly selective in the law or laws that they do choose to observe. 
They only want you to be circumcised so they can boast of their success in recruiting you to their side. That is contemptible. For my part, I'm going to, go, I'm going to boast about nothing but the cross of our master, Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, I have been crucified in relation to the world, set free from the stifling atmosphere of pleasing others and fitting into the little patterns that they dictate. Can't you see the central issue in all this? It's not what you do and I do. Circumcision, uncircumcision. It's what God is doing. And he is creating something, something totally new. A new life. A free life. A new creation. All who walk by the standard are the true Israel of God. His chosen people. Peace and mercy on them. Quite frankly, I don't want to be bothered anymore by these disputes. I got more important things to do. The serious living of this faith. I bear in my body scars from my service to Jesus. May what our master Jesus Christ gives freely be deeply and personally yours, my friends. Oh, yes. Isn't that a great way to say amen? <laughs> oh, yes. He brings us to the end. Look at what I'm telling you, he says. Look at the large letters I use to write to you with my own hands. Look, it is underlined, it is bolded, it is italicized, it is in, in all caps. Don't let this slide by as church speak. Don't have your pious moment in the word and nod your head and close the book and go back to the way that you once lived. No, 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 Paul is saying, don't let this slip you by because here's what it comes down to. In this life and in this world, people will try to seduce you to another gospel. They will try to get you to believe things about God that sound so good but just aren't true. They'll try to tell you that this message of the gospel is too good to be true. How can it be what God has done for me and not what I have to do? It makes no sense. How can we jettison the commands of the Old Testament that God called the people of Israel to keep as though we are no longer bound by them? How can we say that circumcision or whatever other areas and aspects of the law that that command calls us to follow don't count, don't matter any more? It doesn't make sense. And people will tell you that. Churches will tell you that. Christian leaders will tell you that. Your friends will tell you that. But worst of all, your own heart will tell you that. It'll tell you that this message of the gospel is too good to be true, that it can't be true, that the path to a right relationship with God and what it means to be a part of his community of people must, at least in some way, depend on me? In some way, it's got to be about what I do? No, look at the large letters I'm using to write to you. Now, we don't see them. We see them in like, you know, print. I would have loved to have seen that original letter, wouldn't you? Like, like I, I could almost envision this scroll, you know, or this, this, this page that's like 12-point scribble font, and then he comes to this point, and it's like, 36, baby, look at the large letters. Don't miss it. This is coming from me. This isn't me just dictating something. This isn't just a paper I did for a professor. This isn't a sermon I had to prepare so I can keep my job. No, I'm telling you, Paul is saying... This is from me, heart and soul, because you matter. You matter to me, and I love you. And I don't want to see you be driven away from God, deluded and deceived, thinking that you're following him, but alienating yourself from Christ and from grace. Oh, it's so easy to do. It's so easy to do, to start to believe that it's about what I do. 
this whole thing got started. Because what I will say, and I believe this, well-meaning people who were versed in the scriptures and loved Christ came from Jerusalem, from the apostles themselves, or at least they purported to be, to tell these Galatian Christians that Christ was not enough, that there was more that they had to add to the equation. Paul says, you're going to have that in your life. This is only the beginning. Don't listen to them. These people, they just want to impress you. They want to impress others by compelling you to be like them, to do more, to work harder, to contribute to your relationship with God and the grace he's given you. Don't listen to him, he says. No, not one bit. Their motives aren't pure. Which of our motives really are when you come down to it? No, may Christ be the center of your relationship with God, or as we said in the beginning, not the ABCs of Christianity, but the A to Z. Let the cross of Christ be the totality. Let what God has done for you by sending his son to die for you and rise again be the center out of which everything your relationship with God stems from. May I boast, he says, except in the cross of Christ, nothing else but the cross of Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me. It's weak and miserable principles. It's babysitter laws. And I to the world. Because when you come down to it, this line right here is what you can say that Galatians is all about. Circumcision, uncircumcision, doesn't mean anything. Jew or Gentile doesn't mean anything. Rich or poor, it doesn't mean anything. Black or white, it doesn't mean anything. Male or female, it doesn't mean anything. Lutheran or Catholic, it doesn't mean anything. Whatever other kind of thing that you want to put in there. This stuff that we construct in the world, it doesn't mean anything. What counts is what God is doing in you. And let me tell you guys, God is doing something in you. Jesus says, anyone who is born of the Spirit is born again. And if the Spirit of God who is alive in you has given you good new birth, then he who has begun that good work in you will bring it to completion. It is what God is doing in you. A new creation. That you are a new creation. New in God's eyes. Different. Renewed. That what God is doing in this world, a new creation, that God is bringing the curse that we find ourselves under in this world to what he always intended it to be to begin with. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation and the peace, the shalom, the mercy, and the grace, the goodness and the fruit of the Spirit of God will be yours when you grasp it. Because that is who the people of God are. That, as Paul will say, is true Israel. So we've come to the end of Galatians. Paul has to say. And now that we've come to the end, if I can give the Gedini translation, don't give me any crap about this. 
I've said it over and over again. I've appealed to you from experience. I've appealed to you from the scriptures. I've appealed to you from the historic events. I've appealed to you from my own authority as apostle. I've pleaded with you out of the love I have for you in my heart. There's nothing more to be said. You're either going to believe it or you're not. So don't give me your crap about it. No more trouble. Because I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. I've lived it, he says. And I know it. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it be with your spirit. May it mold you, inform you, and sustain you. May it shape the course and trajectory of where that spirit is leading you and who God is calling you to be. May you live in the freedom of the grace of what God has done for you and not who you think you're supposed to be. Brothers and sisters, amen. Let's get on our feet. Pray with me. What do the scriptures say? Your word is alive, it is living, it is active, it is powerful, it is incisive, able to split and divide spirit from soul, so pointed God that it can dissolve marrow from bone, that it is living and active. Lord, let your word wash over us. The message you have to say, Lord, may we cling to it, is that we see it with bold, italicized, 36-point letters. That we are gathered here today, invited into right relationship with you today, part of a covenant people of you today, because of what you have done not what we do. We thank you, O Lord. We thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. We thank you, O Lord, for the resurrection and the new life that he gives. We thank you for sending your spirit into our hearts. May we keep in step with him. Guide us as your people, O Lord, to walk with you in love and gratitude for a new way of being, a new way of life, a new creation that you give. Lord, we come as a people in conflict, in conflict over what your word says and what we think or believe should be true. We come as a a people in conflict between what we want versus what you call us to do. Forgive us in this. Forgive us in the times when our loyalty is split. Forgive us in the times when we waver. Forgive us in the times when we do not commit. Forgive us for all the ways that we walk out of step with your spirit and sow a seed of weeds in our life and not things that honor you. Hear us as we pray this together, O God. Hear our confession to you. Holy Spirit, I have not walked by you. I have gratified my sinful nature. I am in conflict 
I do not do what you want. Lead me today in your way. Forgive my sexual impurity. Forgive my impurity and debauchery. Forgive my idolatry and witchcraft. Forgive my hatred and discord. Forgive my jealousy and temper. Forgive my selfish ambition. Forgive my addictions and excesses and everything else for which I'm ashamed. Produce in us, God, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Crucify my flesh with its passions and desires. Keep me in step with you. And may the God who loves you, who has died for you and risen again, send his spirit into your heart. May you know his mercy. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took a cup after supper, gave thanks, gave it to them and said, drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Come and do this in remembrance of me. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
music out. Welcome back, everybody. They didn't do a music out. I was expecting a music out. I'm like, we don't need to turn the light on. We don't need I, to turn the microphone. I know. On I had yet. to turn this heat around <laughs> like, real quick ah. because, like, they <laughs> ended go. on the dime. So, <laughs> what a way to end. Uh, what a way to end. That's such great music here. It's. Uh, I say I it every week, and I feel like it's getting no. old, but it's great I every think week. The best Sunday is Palm Sunday, in my opinion. Yes. The music is loud. Yes. It's exciting. It makes you want to dance and jump around. So I'm very excited for next week. For multiple reasons. So, what do you think of the service? I have one note. You know what my note is? What is that? What is it? Boys to men, and so we go to the end of the road. Because <laughs> <laughs> he kept saying we're at the end of the road. Right. He kept like, saying over and over again. You belong to me. I belong to you. Uh, boys to men. That's mm-hmm. that's. I know Galatian boys to men, six, sort of, but I don't know six, the music very much. I, I know, know the like two band. Songs. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's funny, before the service, I was talking with the small group guys here, and we're uh-huh. talking about just the different denominations of Christianity and how mm-hmm. sometimes we feel like we're divided because we're slightly different than each other. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about how we have to remember the rules of man are not the rules of God. You know, sure. it's sort of what we kind of talked about at the end of Galatians here. It's kind of weird how it kind of correlates to what we were talking yeah. about before the service and how, you know, we kind of have to cipher through. What is the men of church saying that contradicts what God is saying? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And I feel like as Christians, it's kind of our biggest battle. It's trying to, kind of, even like, even with what the Bible is saying, you know, it's not the original translation. It's been translated however many times in the Bible. So part of me is like, I wish I could go read that original text and see what we're getting right and what we're getting wrong. And I think that's kind of what Paul is touching on at the end of Galatians here. Okay. Not necessarily with the Bible, but just ciphering through what the word of God, sure. God compared sure. to the word of man. Well, and I think too, within like denominational differences, each denomination focuses on something a little bit different. Like, right. okay, you right. guys, I know we're going to focus on baptism. We're Baptists. We're going to focus on baptism. Right. Where Methodists, like we're going to focus on the method, uh, you know? And so unless... Unless you get like wrong in the head, I'm like, this is the only way, this is the only right way. I mean, there's certainly right and there's wrong ways, but like, this is, this is an element that we're focusing on. Right, exactly. Because like the concrete of what Christianity is all about, all the dominations feel. It's, it's about yeah. following the walk of Jesus. Regardless of what path you want to focus on, it's still the walk of Jesus. Yeah. And I think that's something we need to remember. And I think we even mentioned this in our, when we were talking this morning, the devil likes to divide. Dividing yeah. and conquering is a lot easier than a strong group together. And even though yeah. we are maybe different denominations, we're focusing on different things, we still are following Jesus, and that's the main focus. And I think we kind of strive away from that sometimes in sure. today's age and sure. in what, in what I've focused on. So I think that's a great way that to wrap up Galatians. I think Paul said yeah. it best, you know, yeah. don't don't let the words of man fool you. Yeah, then Dave did his own translation, like, oh, brother, what's coming? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, uh, Galatians was awesome. I think uh, it was one of the best, like, teachings that he's done in a long I time. He was on fire. I think it's been phenomenal. I think he's, this is the best he's ever preached. I know certainly that he's gotten a lot of response from this one. Be like, a oh, my gosh, response. this is just life-changing. But you've been, and, and he's like, but this is what we do every Sunday. But there's something about it that it was just different this series. So go back and rewatch if you haven't seen the yes. previous Galatians. This is definitely something to bookmark Woo. and go back and re, re-listen to. Especially yeah. if you felt if you felt a sermon pull at you, bookmark that, earmark that, yeah. and come back to it. Because there's something there. Galatians is moving a lot of people in this. It really is. In this uh, yeah. body of Christ. And yeah, it's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. I'm sad it's over. But that just makes me even more excited to what have Dave has planned for Easter. Does anybody know? Easter. Ask Andrew, Matt. Ask Andrew if we know what this next sermon series is about. I've got connections. Put it over the do. airwaves. <laughs> hey, John, how are you? Hey, 21-6, the net listeners. We're gl- First Corinthians. First, oh, perfect. It's another Paul. We're going. Okay. Our All men's right. group is doing a, it's First not necessarily based off of Corinthians, but what it has Corinthians, Corinthians in it. What's about? Do we know? I, I believe it's, know this. it's a letter sent to Corinth. And well, yeah. About, but what's uh, it about? Let's do this. Um, Watch this. We're going to ask Google. What is 1 Corinthians o- about? Oh, I can't read that. I got it. Let the young eyes take it over. 
No, 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 no. I thought that said first episode at first. Oh, that's not helpful at all. <laughs> uh, What's the wait? Go back up. First Corinthians is a frank, a frank discussion that's going to go well with us. A frank discussion of the church and the issues that impacted real people in the first century. Thanks. That's specific. Very specific. <laughs> So problems that the church had in the first century that Paul is addressing in a letter. Importance of worship. Does that sound like Galatians? Right, this is going to be one. First Corinthians is going to be good, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're, We're not going to go to some lame study no, now. I think, it's going to be exciting study. <laughs> yeah, no, no lame study, no. Uh, the video series that my men's group's going through on Monday nights, yeah. it's not based off First Corinthians, but it has a lot of First Corinthians readings in okay. there. I, I, yeah, a, a couple of them. And... Um, it's the ones we're going through is sexual impurity and uh -huh. throughout the church and that kind of thing. So very interesting how we're doing that. And now Corinthians is starting up. Yeah. I think I'm excited. Very excited. So that will start after the Holy Easter after season. Easter. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that would be the 24th, April 24th. If you say so. I think so. It was crazy to think about that the next series is going to start. Well, I've got a little calendar on my wall of like events, and it's like that's okay, March, we're not April. March. Like, oh, we got to change it over. We got to change it over. I went looking for one, and apparently nobody printed me one. Uh, well, there's plenty in the bathroom. I I'll hung them up this one. morning. So you did okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I finished my thought or if I got distracted. Twenty-one six. The net listeners, we're glad you're with us. If you want more midweek, we do a questions you never thought you could ask in church podcast. It's on twenty-one six. The net. Um, 12.30 to 1.30. Yeah, you can find that also on Facebook Live. Um, if you guys ever have any, like, burning questions about your walk with Christ. Oh, oh, I had a question. It came up yesterday. Oh, 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 I was oh, oh. I, I was listening to a Secrets of Doctor Who podcast Ooh. that is hosted by two Catholic priests. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, and <laughs> so, they, so they were talking about this one episode, and, and they said it's similar to... How, how we believe that there's saints in heaven that are praying for us. I'm like... Okay, yeah. And like, so, like, Holy Mother Mary of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of their death. That's one of the things that they say. I'm like, okay, so you think that dead people in heaven are praying for you. I could see that. Is that biblical? So anyway, I, I re like heard it last night at like 11 p.m. I'm like, oh, I should ask Dave. I'm like, oh, he's never going to answer me. So, oh, I'm going to text it in. Well, perfect. Do we Do know that. that text number? Do you have it on screen? We've got it. We've got it. Yay. And it's on the screen. Yeah, so, so text in your questions. Yeah, whenever it pop there's no dumb question when it comes to this kind of stuff. So please text it in, and they will give the best answer they possibly can. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. That's uh, If you guys want to give back to church, you can text... Um, give. A donation. Yeah, you can text give to. I have it written down. 815 201 1499 should be on the screen as well. Um, feel free, or whatever your heart moves you yeah. to give. You can also find that at the giving page at fellowshipoffaith.org. That's just a great resource all around. Yeah, period. Just go there. Very like, well organized. A couple times a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Bookmark it. So it's the first thing you see when you open up your Safari or Google or whatever. Yeah. Safari. Do you Saf open Safari? I do. That's all I do. My research is on Seriously, Safari. You don't do Google? Is it because it. Google's intrusive and, and sells no, your data? No, not at all. It's just when I got my iPhone, Safari's already pre-downloaded. I don't want to download something else, so I just use Safari. Hmm. Safari is just as intrusive as Google is. So, so I, I, I uh, came home and Dave had some show on from Netflix about how like Google and Facebook are stealing yeah. all your stuff yeah. and, and I how I you know, it's, it's all called. free. Their product is free, but no, you're the product. They're selling <laughs> They're you. They're selling your information. And so it's like, at some level, I feel like, oh, I should be freaked out by this and I should... And I'm like, I don't care. I uh, maybe I'll care in May. <laughs> I'll see these ads for things that I want. So, I mean, what, <laughs> they're sending me things that I may yeah. want. So, whatever. Anyway, Can't Fellowship of Faith it. is not going to give you what you want. They're going to give you what God wants. Exactly. See how I brought that back. I, I like that. <laughs> See, you got to rein us in sometimes. <sighs> next week is Palm Sunday. My, next week is Palm Sunday. Cannot talk about it enough. It's my uh, favorite Sunday of the year. Favorite Sunday. Following week is April. Easter. 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 Sunrise service at 6. It's outside. Incredible service. That is, yes. And It'll be cold, but bring a blanket. Don't yep. don't wear your Sunday best for the 6 a.m. service. No. Wear bundle up and sit out by the fire. I mean, And if it's, you want to wear, like, your really little summer Easter dress, then you can ahead. change. Yeah, right, exactly. Don't, don't wear it outside. <laughs> Come. Yes, bring, bring your own, own chairs. chairs. Thank you, Matt. 
It's something about hearing the Easter story as the sun is coming up uh, over the trees. It's very, very baptisms moving. outside. Oh yeah, it's and the cool. baptisms it's a really outside. Cool service. And then we have nine a.m. and ten a.m. Yep, two services on. Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Nine and ten thirty that day. Oh, they well, that's, that's important to know. They did not brief us. <laughs> We're just going off of whatever we want. And Matt is sometimes, us in. Sometimes we say information. And they're like, nuts. Now we got to fix it. Yeah, to because how that's you guys not said. right. <laughs> <laughs> so 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. for On an Sunday. in-person service. And I don't know. Well, I unfortunately will not be here. Both I'll be. Live. Both will be live streamed. Both will be live streamed. Yep. I won't be. So I don't will. know. Good Friday. Good Friday Monday, will be live streamed Thursday too? Thursday is not live streamed, but Good Friday is. Good, okay. Good Friday is live streamed. Easter is uh, live streamed. We should have an Easter egg hunt. Are we having an Easter egg hunt this year? Do you know? I think so. Okay. My wife hasn't talked about it, so I'm assuming we're not. Okay. We should do a live stream Easter egg hunt. That would be fun. We should, can we do a virtual, a virtual, a virtual Easter, egg Easter egg hunt? Ooh. I don't know how that would work. I don't we, either. We'll I'm, think about it for next year. Okay. Let's we'll have to create a game. Yeah, maybe. Online game. Poke the screen if you want to look for something. There we go. <laughs> we're going to wrap it up. Cause yeah, I think so. We're, uh, we're straying now. So <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Yes, we will. It's Palm Sunday. Get excited. Palm Sunday. Have a good week, guys. Bye, guys.